and blessings. This is episode 15, Mere Moments with Tia Deshay. Today is Tuesday, June 4th, 2024. I am Tia Deshay. I write now so others can remember later. I produce Purpose from Chaos. I am a spiritual teacher for social, generational, and personal change. I am a daughter of the Most High God. I am an ambassador of the Kingdom of God. I am about my father's business. It is my intention to fulfill the scriptural mandates of Jeremiah 1 9. Then the Lord reached out his hand and touched my mouth and said to me, I have put my words in your mouth in Revelation 10 11. Then I was told, You must prophesy again about many people, peoples, nations, languages, and kings. It is my prayer for Matthew, the 13th chapter and the 35th verse, to unfold in my life, ministry, and practice. So was fulfilled what was spoken through the prophet. I will open my mouth in parables. I will utter things hidden since the creation of the world. And Luke 21, 15, for I will give you words and wisdom that none of your adversaries will be able to resist or contradict. For this episode, we're doing a part two from episode 14, The Art of Forgiveness. In this one, I want to clarify, Spirit is telling me to clarify and to give more context about our lack of issuing an apology will cause collateral damage. It will cause casualties of war. Because when we don't offer an apology, we are really engaging in spiritual warfare. Because there are forces, lower level forces, our ego, that are creating this antagonistic relationship or war within itself. Because a house divided against itself is going to fall. And so we are really engaged in spiritual warfare when we refuse to offer an apology, a sincere, heartfelt, intentional apology. We have now... Stepped, in, stepped on the battlefield. We're in warfare. And if we don't follow the battle plan and become strategic in this warfare, there will be casualties. Now, the goal is not to, be, not to have casualties on our turf. Um, actually, in forgiveness, this is an instance where there are no casualties that we don't want any casualties that's that's the whole point of forgiving is so that there are no casualties however in part one it was said that if we don't apologize there will be casualties okay so here's the context and we really, 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 really need to understand this, especially if you have children. Because what we have not been told is that children are the harvest of a lot of the seeds that we have planted. So when a person has children, they will, they will now get to see in real time the harvest of a lot of seeds that they planted, be it good or bad. Because as, as long as the earth remains, there will be seed time and harvest. So you can plant the seeds when you're five years old. And you may not, the time in between you're five years old from the time you have your first child, that's the time part. So from the time you're five until the time you have your first child, that's the time part. That child will now present to you the harvest of the seeds you planted at five. Now, of course, when we're five years old, we're not thinking that way. We're not, we're not living intentionally. We don't have that awareness or understanding that what I'm doing at five years old, I'm going to see the harvest of this 20 years from now. We don't have that understanding until 20 years from now because hindsight is 2020. But I really want to 
drill this in you, the context of this. This is really, 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 really important because for some of you, the context really is that the children may be a casualty of war if we don't offer or if you don't offer an apology. Let me give you an example. I'm sure somebody that's listening has heard where, you know, we've seen it on the news or we heard about it, um, where literally people have been shot and killed because they stepped on somebody's foot. Like literally been shot and killed because they stepped on someone's foot. And they may have apologized. But let's connect this to what we're talking about. So they may have apologized and the person still shot and killed them. Well, somewhere, somewhere in that person's life, somebody in their bloodline, whether it was a parent, somebody in the bloodline responded negatively toward an apology. Now, they may not have went to the extent of killing the person physically. They may have killed the person with their words, but that's how they responded to an apology. Somebody came and apologized to them, and they just ate them alive with their tongue. I mean, they just gave them a good lashing with their tongue. Don't nobody want to hear that? And, you know, you shouldn't have did this. And I'm not accepting your apology. And, re I mean, just gave them a good lashing with their tongue. And then here comes this child. Now, if it was a parent or anybody in that bloodline, here comes this child. You reap what you sow. Seed time and harvest. You don't know how the harvest is going to come. You don't know how you're going to experience the harvest. All you know is that whatever seeds you plant, give it some time, you're going to reap a harvest. Well, unfortunately, the harvest for that seed, when someone came to you and they honestly, you know, um, they were honest, they were pure, they were sincere, really apologized to you and you were just nasty to them. Well, guess what? The harvest of that seed now manifested in somebody unfortunately taking your child's life even after they apologized for stepping on their on their foot that's how serious this thing is no one teaches us that and i think if we got more teachings of that of this and we really 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 got it in our spirit and in our subconscious mind, we will be way more mindful of the words that come out of our mouth and how we talk to people and how, we'll re how we respond to people. That is why for the friends, for the, for the friends of mine uh, that have children, I am really big on you know, watch what you say, watch what you say, watch what you say, because you got a child now. And, and you know, watch what you do, watch how you respond, watch how you treat people, you know, because that harvest could very well come through your child, how your child is treated. It's not random that, you know, a child is, is experiencing bully, bullying, that's not random. That's a seed that was planted by the parent or somebody in, in their bloodline. And now the harvest is being shown up or is, is showing up in the kid's life. Now they're being bullied. Somewhere, some way, uh, somebody was, was bullying somebody in that bloodline. It could have been the parent. And now the child is experiencing bully, bullying. Nothing is random. Nothing is by coincidence. Nothing. So when we hear stories about, oh, you know, this, that they just shot and killed the person because they stepped on the person's foot. 
Well, that's because somebody planted that seed. Even even after, you know, even though the person, you know, the child apologized or the person apologized. Somewhere in that person's bloodline, either the parent, somebody was very negative and mean when, when someone came to offer an apology to them or to ask for forgiveness. And so that seed in... So that seed came back, unfortunately, through the death of their child. That's how serious this thing is. It's not to be played with. It's not to be played with. There have been so many instances in my life where, you know, I should have been physically harmed or, you know, or even worse, dead because of how I treated people or what I said to people. But because I grew up, first of all, it was because mercy, God's mercy, that I did not get what I deserved. That's number one. But also because I grew up in an environment where apologies were... Um, Apologies were, what's the word I want to use? Non-negotiable. You were going to apologize for your wrong. Like that was a standard, one of the standards that was upheld in my home growing up. You're going to apologize. You're going to apologize. And it's not going to be an excuse attached to it. You're going to apologize. And because I planted those seeds when I was young, when I behaved inappropriately toward other people, I didn't get what I should have gotten when I behaved inappropriately toward them. They actually they actually just either ignored me or when I did apologize, they accepted my apology, they forgave me. You know, it was water under the bridge. It was... You know, they didn't hold it against me, but that's because I planted, my parents planted those seeds in me when I was young of forgiveness. And I had no idea when I was young when I would need a harvest on those seeds. That's how serious this thing is. Because a lot of people, well, the people that are connected to us is, are suffering because of us, because of the seeds that we planted and the harvest is being manifested in their lives. And if we don't come into the awareness of this and go ahead and apologize, our children will become casualties of war. They will become collateral damage. If it's not our children, it'll be those close to us. Because we are all connected. That's how serious this thing is. That's how serious this thing is. We must apologize for, for those that are coming after us so they don't have to reap the consequences of our poor decisions or our decisions based on arrogance and pride and greed and anger and bitterness. We have to apologize or otherwise that harvest is going to come, is going to produce in the lives of those close to us whether it's our children, niece, nephew, brother, sister, cousin, husband, wife, boyfriend, girlfriend, mama, daddy, it's, it's going to manifest. That's how serious this thing is. And no one, is, I won't say, but people don't, we haven't been taught to look at it this way. We like to just think, just me, myself, and I, this is only affecting me, myself, and I, and it's not. That's why it is dangerous 
it is dangerous for those that have children and if you have friends who are condoning your behavior and allowing you to walk in pride and arrogance and anger and bitterness and unforgiveness and, and lack of accountability and not confessing your wrongdoing to other people. They're encouraging this, they're entertaining this, and you have children, you're playing with fire. Because that harvest is going to come up in the lives of your children. Because you're not always going to be around your children 24 hours a day. So really, it takes great faith in humanity when you have children because you're you're hoping and you're praying that there are people out there who will who will show kindness to your child when you're not around that's a huge faith walk for people that have children that's a huge faith walk because you are literally relying on the kindness of strangers because you're not around your child 24 7 so you are hoping praying believing that people are treating your child with kindness but what if i told you you don't you don't have to hope and believe or or be in stress or anxiety i should say that you can you can control a lot of it you can control how people respond to your children by how you respond to other people the seeds that you plant in your life will help determine how complete strangers will respond to your children when you are not around then it doesn't have to be a a, a hoping and pleading and begging type thing and and you know hoping that people are nice to your child now still obviously you still pray over your children every day i'm this does not negate that you still cover your children protect your children all of that but there are some practical things you can do which is being well prayer is practical how do i want to say it the faith the action because faith without works is dead so when you pray and you cover your child and you protect your child and you put angels surrounding your child, all of that, you know, you are now expressing your faith. But faith without works is dead. So the works that you're doing is you're being kind to other people. The action steps that you are taking to ensure that your children are treated kindly by strangers by people that they encounter when you're not around is you start doing that you start being kind and nice to people and those seeds will come those seeds will bloom in your child's life that way you can send them off to school you can send them off to college you can send them off to the military. You can send them off to five states away and not be stressed or in, a, in anxiety because you know you treat people kind and that, that seed has to come up in your child's life. Because when you have children, everything you do it's it's like you it's like double fold. You're not only planting the seed for yourself, but you're planting the seed for your child or children. I know, I know, I know that I know that I know because of my grandparents, because of my parents, many of the positive experiences that I've had in life is because they were kind people. Did they make mistakes? Did they, ha did they have their shortcomings and their flaws? Absolutely. But for the most part, they were kind people. They treated people with kindness. They were people of integrity. And because of that, because of those seeds that they planted, when nobody was looking, 
I was able to reap that harvest when I went away to school, when I moved to different states to live and to work. That was all because they planted the seeds of kindness. So when it was my turn to go move to a different state, work in a different state, I was able to experience the kindness of strangers. That was, that was just the harvest of what my parents and grandparents did. That's why this thing is so important. That's why you need to apologize. Because you're setting your children up for success. Because you don't know when your child is going to encounter a situation where they are going to offer an apology and it can literally mean life or death. That somebody, that the person's response literally is because of how you responded to somebody else. That's how serious this thing is. It's not to be played with. We are, nothing is by coincidence. Nothing is by happenstance. How you are behaving toward another person, if it's poor, if it's inappropriate, if it's mean, if it's malicious, and you have not offered an apology, it's going to manifest not only in your life, but in your child's life if you have children. And if you don't have children, it's gonna manifest in your life and those around you in some way, shape or form. Because we are all connected. We have to stop living life thinking that what we do, we do it in a bubble. That, that, that is not true at all. Especially if we have children. Especially if we have children. And I'm trying to think if there's anything else I need to clarify about this. Don't We don't want the people that we love, the people that are close to us, that we're in relationship with to be casualties of war because we don't want to offer an apology. That it is, it's, it's a disservice and it's unkind to the people around us because you're putting them in the line of fire and they don't even know what's going on. Because you wanna be hard headed and stubborn and in your feelings and angry and bitter and hateful. And you wanna point the finger and be the victim. And, and those who are encouraging you to stay in that state, who are like, you know, encouraging, encouraging you not to forgive, they're entertaining that, they will reap that, they will reap what you sow as well. They are not going to be left untouched. They are now an accessory. So those that are just, you know, encouraging you, a cheerleader like, yeah, I wouldn't apologize either and forget that, stay on your ground. They're going to get it too. Whatever whatever harvest is coming, they getting it too. So be mindful of entertaining that kind of foolishness. Encourage people to forgive. It's not excusing what the person did. And a lot of times, and sometimes it's not, I won't say a lot of times, but sometimes it's not even... You may not have even been wrong. But the person just, your intentions may have been not even to hurt the person, but the person interpreted 
that way. They perceived it that way, you know? And so you just apologize. Even though you know your intentions was not to be mean, not to be hurtful, um, but they just perceived it that way. Okay, apologize. It's not going to hurt you. It's only going to help you. It's only going to make you better. And another thing, how do I explain this? I'm hearing to say, don't apologize. You need to have discernment when it comes to apologies. Because there are instances. And this is very, you got to have discernment when I say this, because this does not apply to everybody. But there are instances where you are apologizing for someone receiving their karma. And you got to stop doing that. This um this only applies to a few of you. And you you you'll understand it when you hear it. You're holding on to guilt and shame feeling like it's your fault. No. You were assigned to carry out that person's karma. You were you were a figure, you were a main character in that in that person receiving their karma. You played a role. It was divinely orchestrated. You were supposed to play a role in that person receiving their karma. Stop apologizing. And the only reason you're apologizing is because you are concerned about what other people think, about your reputation, about how people are perceiving you. That's none of your business. That's none of your business. But this is only for a select few. Those that are hearing this, you will understand what I'm saying. You were, that was part of the plan. You were assigned to be that person's karma or to carry out that person's karma. Stop apologizing for it. Because then it's like you're saying that God made a mistake. Right now, you don't see the implications of this choice or, or the role that you played, but you will. But Spirit is saying, stop apologizing. And that's only for a select few. All right, so that is the end of episode 15. So on the screen, you see ways to give. You choose one, whichever way you would like to give. You can purchase my books. You can go on my website and purchase uh, my courses or my services. You can purchase my courses on Udemy. You can give a monetary donation through PayPal or Cash App. Uh, you could read a book, you could forgive, you could mind your own business. These are all ways that you could give to support this ministry, this channel, this message, and this podcast. And finally, thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much for taking notes. Thank you so much for having an open mind and being receptive. You don't have to agree with everything. I'm not here to convert. I'm not here to convince you of anything. I'm just here to give a message. And if the message applies to you, then so be it. Spirit will tell you how to integrate that message into your life. And how to move forward with that message. And how to, and how to use or leverage that message so that you will grow 
as a human being. And if it doesn't apply to you, then that's okay too. But th I'm not here to convert. I'm not here to convince. I'm not here to browbeat you. I'm just here to give a message, to deliver a message. And, be and because of that, I am grateful. I am grateful. So I'll, until next time, pay attention to what you don't see because what you don't see will help you make sense of what you are seeing. Stay blessed and stay aware.